One of the biggest advantages in oil painting today are the advances in science behind the colors, the brushes, all of the tools that we use. In particular today, I want to share the biggest advantage. And this is the original Anton Mengs painting from 1774, a self-portrait. So we are starting this off with charcoal. And no, I don't move that fast. I'm experimenting with uh, editing with a time lapse a little bit, uh, just for this video. We'll see how it does. If you don't like the time lapse, then we'll go back to the other way, um, which is edited, but I don't show you the entire footage. This time you will see most of the footage, most of it, um, and it will be in, in a fast format like this. So we're working with charcoal, and we're doing a very simple block in, and we're getting the big shapes of the head in position. The block in, of course, is one of the most uh, intricate parts in any kind of drawing, whether it's a portrait or uh, any, anything. Uh, portrait just ends up being the hardest thing ever. But the important thing is that you're using simple straight lines and angles, as you're seeing here, to convey the direction of things. And trying to see it in three dimensions instead of just copying uh, what you see in, in 2D. I always recommend, if you can, to work from a master study or work from life. But try as much as you can to avoid working from photo references uh, that are not artistic photographs. For example, pictures of celebrities or pictures of your best friend or someone's wedding photo or something like that. Unless you're paid to do it, avoid doing it because it probably will hurt. It will hinder your artistic development. Now now as you see the uh, drawing is quite loose. I don't need that many shapes and we're going to talk about the biggest advantage in uh, the water mixable oil paint that we're going to be using and um, there's actually many advantages. I, I found that there are more pros than cons to um, the water mixable paints that I have been using recently. And one of them is the fact that it will not uh, wipe off that easily. So I just inked in the lines. As you saw there, we skipped that part. We filled in the lines with... Let's do a little analysis real quick of, of the painting at the current stage. So as you'll see, each individual feature, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the ear, each individual feature is composed of just a few shapes, not a lot of detail, straight lines and angles. This will allow me to work into the values with much more ease than having a fully rendered out outline. A dark color, a dark brown color, and we're just thinning out with water and now we're filling in the darks. This is going to be a huge advantage over traditional oil paint and over acrylic and over pretty much everything out there and uh, it's because what this does and I call it pretend drying but because it's not fully dry but it pretend dries so um, when you thin out the paint, and I'm talking about Cobra Talons in particular, but I will experiment with some other water mixables just to see if there are that many differences between them all. So we are going in with fairly thin paint, um, but the only thing we're doing is thinning out with water. And as you see, my hand was moving all across, and that's because that area is pretend dry. So when I call it, I say pretend dry, what I mean is that I can run my finger across it and it's not going to wipe off. So here's the advantage that that has for you. As you see, I'm, t I'm still testing it and I can't believe that it does that. So here's the biggest problem with acrylic paint. Um, the biggest problem with acrylic paint is not that it dries really fast, but that it dries darker. 
and that makes it very difficult for you to gauge your values. The biggest problem with oil paint is that it takes a long time to dry and then when it does dry the darks sink in or fade into the layer of uh, gesso or paint underneath. Uh, so two really difficult things uh, to deal with in terms of the drying with both oil paint and acrylic paint. Now here's the advantage with the, um, the water mixable. The pretend dry, what I mean is that it doesn't come off that easily but it still remains workable. So what that means is now that I'm adding another layer onto this layer here, it remained workable so that it accepts the wet into wet paint without having to worry about painting into something that is in between dry. Now in terms of the technique, this would be very similar to uh, traditional oil paint except for the fact that with traditional oil paint you always lose your lines a little bit when you start to add color and that is no longer a problem with the water mixable at least with Cobra Talons because of the way that it dries or pretend dries. Now I am not sponsored by Cobra Talons though I would like to be. Um, these videos are to show you the advantages that I have uh, more recently figured out now the process is very traditional in the sense that uh, we're going in with our darks first before going into our lights and as you see now I've added some skin color into the mix so um, this video is more about paint handling not so much about color but the colors on my palette are pretty simple it's just white yellow orange red and I did have a burnt sienna there though I don't use it or sorry a burnt umber though I don't really use it for anything and then ultramarine blue but later on in the painting I ended up favoring just the primaries yellow red and blue and I'll talk more about that in a future video but now as we start to fill in the dark shapes and start to walk our way towards the um, the darker shapes the are sorry the light shapes the important thing to note about the approach is that we are working now with thicker paint in the light thicker paint first and then I'm thinning it out with water do you see that's the same exact color that I started on the forehead All right, so let's do a little analysis on the color now. As at this part in the painting, I'm starting to add, and do you see how thin the paint is there? I used the water to thin it out. A little analysis here. So um, some, the, the red that I'm using is kind of important. Um, pyrrole red, if you can see it there. That's the P-Y-R-R-O-L-E red. That's the red that I'm using. The yellow that I'm using is... Uh, permanent yellow deep and the blue is of course just a uh, ultramarine blue those colors the primaries will get you an orange and I, I mentioned it in the video but an orange that uh, can be grayed out to look like a skin color as you see it's almost a similar color to my hands there so there you can see um a little bit more closely exactly what was going on there in this analysis and what I did was I added more water to that paint, that same color, and I'm using it to kill off the white of the canvas. So this allows me to work on to a wet, work on a, a white surface without having to have any tone underneath. So the thing about thinning out the paint on the face is that it is going to pretend dry in a little bit so while it's pretend drying I'm going to fill in the background and when I say pretend dry I mean that it's going to not come off the canvas that easily which will allow me to paint almost as if it would be wet onto dry however the paint remains workable that is in essence the biggest advantage um, but 
there are more advantages and we're going to keep talking about those advantages. Um, so now that we're filling in some of the background colors, I'm going to pretty much just leave it to a vignette as you see there. I'm filling in just a kind of greenish dark something something or other underneath of um, what he's wearing. But that's, that's pretty much just all going to be for vignette. And by the way, this is sped up, but um, the painting took about a week and a half. And I didn't work on it, of course, every single day of the, of the week, but I did work on it a fairly long time. Uh, so even though the video is sped up for you to be able to see it um, in a shorter amount of time, it is still something that took a long time to do. And now that the skin color pretend dried, it's now a matter of going in for the kill. So I'm going in with my sable brushes in order to add more detail, more structure into the eye. So the eye to our left is now blocked in with the major planes involved in it. So those planes are important in the sense that it gives the depth of form. But again, this video is not so much about that either. This video is about the advantage in the water mixable. And I thought to show you this in the fast sped up version so that you can see how I work from one plane to an adjacent plane pretty much as if I were working now wet into dry. And I believe this is actually a, another day. Um, another day has gone by. So this should be the second day that I've worked on this painting. And um, the layer is completely dry underneath. It, it seems as though it is completely dry. So no medium goes into this at all. And as you're turning form, it's always a bit easier to make it too dark at first. So with traditional oil paint and uh, just same as traditional oil paint, water mixable oil paint shares the same um, the same advantage that it's easier to add light over top of dark to drag the light as you see right there into the dark to turn form is much easier. The skin color is quite simple. It's just an orange and a gray neutralizing each other out because gray is somewhat bluish and blue and orange are complementary colors. So they kill each other off naturally and create a, a neutral, uh, simple looking skin color like that. And I'm just mixing my paint on a Tupperware lid. As you see, nothing fancy. Um, using a Tupperware lid because it fits in my freezer easily and here goes another advantage with these paints is that um, if you accidentally spill or get some of it onto your food items in the freezer, there's no lead, uh, there, there's no toxicity, though you never want to eat paint. I mean, if you're trying to eat the paint, then there's probably some something else there to, to focus on. But um, it is much safer. Uh, to store in the freezer than your traditional oil paints. Now you see the forehead, the form has been uh, developed via the planes just like the, uh, the eye to our left. Working from the darks and moving your way up towards the light and maintaining the delineation between light and shadow. Now the video is sped up to about four times the speed. So I work four times um, more, uh, uh, this is four times faster than I usually work. So uh, consider that I am taking a lot more time per shape. Now here's another thing about water mixable oil paint, um, in particular Cobra Talons, is that for one reason or another, these paints do not sink in that much when they dry, hardly at all. They do sink in a little bit. I've noticed it now. They do sink in a little bit, but nowhere near as much as traditional oil paints sink in. So what does that mean 
for the technique. What it means is that if I were to leave the painting at this stage right now and return to it a week later and paint wet into dry, it's not going to look any different because the darks haven't sunken in as much. So it will look as if I'm painting wet into wet, even though I'm painting wet into dry. So for those of you that are just starting out painting and are not familiar with the term wet into wet, wet into dry, or sunken in, then you're going to be at a big, big advantage if you begin your uh, training using this method. It has simplified a lot of things for me in terms of um, the paint drying true, uh, remaining true, um, none of the colors uh, changing very much between layers. Very, very useful thing. Now, as you see with the sable, I'm quite meticulous. Uh, and you can see it with more clarity now that the, the video is accelerated. Uh, and I, I do apologize for those of you that have been watching for a long time. I did say I would, I would try to never have a time lapse. But I mean, it's a time lapse in 30 minutes, so maybe it's not too bad. But, but hopefully you get the gist of it. Um, I'm working with cat's tongue shaped sable brushes going in for the kill, basically, going in every little pixel, every little window of form. And this is how you describe form with uh, more clarity than um, if you were looking at just a photograph of, of a celebrity or something like that. Now the biggest advantage, and I keep talking about it, the biggest advantage, as you see how I'm moving the nose, I had the angle of the nose um, incorrect. The biggest advantage is that this these paints dry true. They dry very true. So you're able to work many different days and have the confidence knowing that you're able to return to the painting no matter what stage it's at, no matter how it looks, you're able to return to it and work wet into dry as if you were working wet onto wet. And if you paint in this method where you basically go and kill off, um, and, and when I say kill off, I mean essentially finish uh, one section at a time, it is very useful to have your paints uh, remain true. Because I at this point this is a second day I believe I'm I, I'm not sure, but I know that there was about four or five different days involved in the filming of this painting, and you see that it didn't change, uh, the the lighting on the camera whatever it is nothing really changed. As I say that, the lighting changed. <laughs> so the lighting changed, but as you can see, the uh, paint has not sunken in very much. And this is definitely uh, either the second or the third day now working on this painting. So the base skin color that I applied onto the face before applying these planes was to kill off the white of the canvas, but also something that would be uh, a value that's, it gives me enough room to add light and to add dark. And the white of the canvas more recently I found that the white of the canvas actually lets me have more control over the darks. The darks are what make the thing look realistic. The darks are what makes anything look more um, 
look, look more dimensional. So if I have more control over the darks, yet not as much over the highlights, that's still a good thing. And it allows you to be a little lazy because you don't have to tone your canvases ahead of time. Let's be real here. Uh, I don't enjoy toning canvases, uh, contrary to some videos that I've made in the past. At least these days, I'm not a big fan of uh, toning a bunch of canvases and waiting for them to dry. Another thing that you'll notice um, is that I'm actually working on a sheet of cotton canvas yet again. So that's how I'll be working with these tutorials for the foreseeable future. And uh, if I ever want to stretch it, I can just cut it and stretch it, or I can mount it onto a panel. Oh, and there is yet another advantage to these uh, water mixable oil paints. And uh, I do want to be sponsored by them, I, I will say. Uh, I have a lot of good things to say about them. Uh, but another really good thing is they're not very expensive. And uh, everything in the world seems to be getting more and more expensive as time goes on. Um, they're not very expensive. Uh, the red that I'm using is not a cadmium red. The yellow is not a cadmium yellow. And the, uh, the information is listed in the description box of the video. The red I'm using is called Pyrol Red. It's semi-transparent. The yellow I'm using is Permanent Yellow Deep. It is also semi-transparent. My The white that I'm using is Titanium White, and is, it is fully opaque. It is an opaque white. However, as you see with the semi-transparent colors, it looks like I'm using uh, lead white. It, it looks like I'm glazing lots of colors uh, with a lot of uh, care, but I'm not. I'm really not um, glazing much of anything. Really, I'm not glazing anything. Everything is being painted in terms of planes. Now here's another advantage to the uh, the water mixable that's not quite um, not, not as much of a thing with um, with traditional oil paint, and um, that is going to be in the way that these colors um, blend into one another. They have that melted butter kind of creamy uh, consistency that traditional oil paints have. However, they are more silky, um, I will say. It is more silky than, say, like an Old Holland um, or like a Williamsburg uh, or a Gamblin or a Winter. They're more silky, and it takes some time to get used to if you're not used to it. I didn't, I didn't adapt to that uh, particular trait to water mixable. Um, I, I didn't adapt to it right away. Uh, a couple years ago when I first tried it, that was one of the things I just didn't like, along with the drying time, um, until I realized, again, more recently, that uh, you can use the fact that it pretend dries to your advantage. And see how we, we built up to the highlight, started off with the darks first, worked our way up to the highlight, and now look how dimensional the nose looks. It has a cast shadow, a form shadow, a dark light, a light light, and a highlight. And you see that I'm following with each little patch of, of value. I'm following the topography, the surface structure of the head. Now again, more about the uh, biggest advantage biggest advantages, but, but really the biggest advantage with these uh, modern colors, because that's what they are. They're modern colors that are in place of uh, things like like uh, like your red back in the day was based on mercury. It was, uh, and it's still, all of these historical pigments are still uh, being used today. Um, 
and you have your red would have been for vermilion, which is mercury. You would have had uh, lead tin yellow, which has lead in it. You would have had um, Naples yellow. The original one has lead in it. You would have had uh, for your white, you would have only had access to lead white. Um, you would have had lead in pretty much everything. And back in the day, they probably had lead in their forks and their plates and stuff. So really couldn't avoid lead back then. But but today, the biggest advantage I'm, I'm telling you with these colors, and it, it, it took me a while to figure it out, uh, but the biggest advantage with these colors is how they dry. Um, the pretend dry that I call. Uh, I call it pretend dry. But the way that they dry... Um, is such that within minutes of applying a color or a line, let's just say a, a plane, within within minutes, if the paint is thin, uh, thinned out with water, slightly thinned out with water, it starts to remain as if it were dry, dry, completely dry. But of course, I call it pretend dry because it's not fully dry. Now, another thing, again, about the drying, and I, I keep talking about the, the drying as an advantage, um, is that it doesn't get like a hard glue like, um, like traditional oil paint when it becomes tacky. Uh, the word tacky with traditional oil paint is when uh, it is almost dry, but it's completely not workable because it's, it's like a... Uh, molasses that has like some some super glue in it it's like molasses with super glue uh, traditional oil paint these don't do that uh, the pretend dry is the same consistency until it is uh, dry dry and you do not have to use medium with this uh, and I, I keep emphasizing how how useful it is and, and look at the planes around the chin see how I left all of that uh, but you can clearly see the topography of the planes and you can clearly see that I'm not just I'm not like mindlessly copying what I'm looking at you, you can see that I'm I'm thinking out the plane of the uh, the orbicularis oris of the mouth underneath as it turns under towards the chin and uh, that color change as it starts to get a little bit more green underneath. Uh, but anyway, back to the big advantage of the drying. Um, it is a huge thing because if you are going to work on a painting like this one piece at a time, um, it is incredibly annoying when traditional oil paint um, starts to get tacky on you, especially if you worked on the painting the previous day and you wanted to return to the same area of the painting and you find that you can't do that anymore because it's uh, molasses with super glue. This is just molasses um, with maybe a little bit of uh, Elmer's glue or if that's even a thing anymore. It's like slightly hardened molasses. It's like working on... Uh, I don't know how to describe it. When it's pretend dry, it's pretty much just like slightly hardened molasses, uh, which is not something that sounds appealing when, you, when you're talking about paint, but it is highly useful. And uh, now we've rendered out the face, and it's been about 27 minutes, uh, so the video is about to end soon. So uh, the important thing, and I, I said it over and over and over again in this video, but it is how these colors dry that makes them uh, the, the biggest advantage and in the in the future videos I'll talk more about things like uh, color uh, I'm sure you're interested in, in how to work with the color uh, variations and things like that uh, but the drying is has been a very important thing and now to put in the dark of the background this is going to be one of the last uh, things that I'll have on on video and uh, the rest of it is off a of video um, to have more more time with the painting. But like I said, all of this is uh, incredibly useful. And let me know what you think. Um, I'm sure many of you probably don't like 
that the video was sped up like this. Uh, but let me know what you think. I don't have to do this with every single video. It surely was easier for me to edit, I'll tell you that much, but um, let me know what you think about it. Um, and that way I can have more you know, more of an understanding of what, what you're interested in. But as you can see, we can get a very classical looking realistic painting uh, with, with very little very little uh, toxicity and lots of consistency within the within the colors. So last minute little little touch-ups to the neck. And that should be about it for the footage. I hope that you enjoyed and uh, stay tuned for some more information on my online classes. So if you are interested in taking your art education with me further, please consider checking out my online classes on my Patreon. That is patreon.com slash uh, It's also listed in the description box of this video. The online classes now start out at just $5 a month gets you into still life class. $10 a month gets you access to portraits and $20 a month gets you access to figure painting. So we have classes, uh, still life slash landscape is Mondays, portrait is on Wednesdays, figure is on Fridays, and we have some additional uh, classes on Tuesday as well. The online classes are now all on Zoom. You're able to hang out with me on Zoom during each class along with uh, the recording of it on uh, YouTube for online students only. Again, I wish you all the very best in all of your artwork, and I will see you on the next one.